Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Big talk about what's going on with Gabriel Jesus and um, Arsenal are edging closer to landing this uh, sensational striker who really wants to come into his own at his own club. And the player's agent, Marcelo Patinati, is set to land in Europe today. He's actually at London Coney at the moment now in a meeting with Edu and Vinay. And we know that the personal terms are agreed. And he's also, his agent is saying that he cannot wait to join the club this summer. So that's really good news. Considering what we've heard of late, earlier on this week, we heard that Chelsea had reportedly jumped in their interest for both Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling. But today we've also heard that Juventus have inquired about Gabriel Jesus. So guys, please, let's just get this over the line. The player wants to come here. He feels that he's the right guy who can get the team into the Champions League. He's played with the manager before and he's got a great relationship with Edu. I can't see anybody coming in here, lastminute.com, and messing up this deal. I think this one is definitely going to go through, guys. And for me, really, it's just a matter of time before it's announced. But the Gunners are also very confident in Yuri Tielemans. Now, when Arsenal's two priority top signings in Gabriel Jesus and Yuri Tielemans, Arsenal have been talking to their representatives for months. So it isn't just something that has just jumped out of the woodwork. This has been planning for a while. So we do know that they've done their background checks on this. And they've shown the players a lot of interest. And I believe that that's going to be enough to take these over the line. We still have to wait and see what's going on with Tielemans yet. Because no personal terms have been sorted out there. But Arsenal is stepping up their pursuits of Rafina. And believe me, i got a lot to say about this. With his deal, it's expected to drag through the transfer window because of the Basuma problem. Now, Rafina is heavily in demand. The transfer fee is going to be well in excess of 50 million and there'll be add-ons, of course. But now, for a lot of fans, they like the player. And I think he's okay. I think he's an okay player. But do I think he's 50 million? No. Do I think he's a need at Arsenal? Probably, because Saka will need a backup if Pepe is going to be sold. But his stats aren't as good as Saka's. If I talk about the player who we're selling in Pepe, Pepe's stats are better than Saka's. As I said, he's averaged 13 goals a season. And he's also averaged 9 assists. Saka has 11 goals and 7 assists. But when I talk about Rufina and Saka, both players have played over 35 games last season. Both scored 11 goals on the right-hand side. Saka had 7 assists, but Rufina only had 3. He also had a staggering seven yellow cards. So when you talk about Mikel Arteta trying to grow discipline within the team and get rid of that awful record of red cards that he's carrying, this ain't it. This isn't a guy who's going to be at an elite level. Remember, we talked about Serge Gnabry only played 30 games and scored 17 goals. That is a complete and utter fantastic return on your investment if you bring someone like him in. Rafinha... Not so much. So we go to the signing of Marquinez, which, uh, isn't it weird that Liverpool signed Nunes, Man City signed Hadlan, and Arsenal announced the Marquinez signing. It really is a disparity between the upper echelon teams, two of the best teams in this country, and a team like Arsenal, who is in the Europa League, not in the Champions League, they're trying to get those upper echelon players. They're just not available in this type of market. But technical director Edu said we're delighted to have completed the transfer with Sao Paulo as Marquinez was a player we had been watching for quite a while. At 19 years old, he's still very young, so he's still a player for the future. See, they shouldn't really use that term because if he's ready and he's good now, then he's ready now, not the future, especially last season. But um, what we're looking for is we're looking for impact now. Yeah, we've had that teething year where we just missed out on the Champions League. Right now, we have to play like we're getting that fourth spot. And the teams above us are moving further away while we're still talking about these players that we've got here now that we're trying to develop. We need to get some veterans and we need to get some impact players who can help this team right now. And obviously, I don't think that Marquinez is that type of player. But we'll wait and see, guys. We'll wait and see what he can give us. So he's going to join us in the summer for pre-season. And look, for me, guys, it's a low-risk and high-reward 
and hopefully this is where the group stages of the Europa League comes into its own for players like him, Mikel Aziz, Charlie Patino and Hutchinson. Both of those players didn't really get a chance last season. But there seems to be a lot of frustration in the market because Arsenal fans want to sign the world's best players. And like I said last summer, that isn't our market. Too many players are targeted playing in the Champions League. Two of our targets that we had talked about are convinced that Arsenal can get them into the top four with their help. So this is really what you have to do. Liverpool was successful doing this with Firmino, Salah and Mane. And if they can do it, if they can go out there and find those productive players, then surely our front office can. And that's where the problem is at the moment now. Edu, Vinay, Richard Garlic. The front office really has to start pulling their weight on bringing these players in. Now, if you groom smartly, then you can get those type of players before they turn 23. That's where it really is. Because the search for a big striker, guys, is, is really frustrating. We're hearing some crazy numbers now. Nunes going to Liverpool for 85 million, and that set a trend in the market. Whereas Osihem, Isak and Nakanku are priced at 100 million. Now, if you want to make another Pepe mistake, then bring one of those players in. Otherwise you're going to have to go with the route of building smartly. And then you're going to have to get these type of players in before they turn 22, 23. Groom them when they're 19, 20 years old. And then they won't be able to cost these astronomical amounts. Because remember, people talk about Usaham 100 million, but Napoli paid 68 million for him. So even they're looking for a return on their investment as well. And in my opinion, the guy ain't going nowhere because no one's going to be, no one's got that kind of money to mess around. I know... It was nice last year that Man City bought Grealish, but he weren't worth half of that. And has he delivered? Not really. 100 million? You can't really say he has for that price. Arsenal are reported in being interested in Nakanku, but like I said, 100 million for the player, I just cannot see it. PSG says that they're ready to pay the money. Arsenal, I just can't see it, guys. And there's also news that Arsenal and Man United are in a heated duel to sign Vintina. Now, Vintina is from Porto. 22-year-old, he's not a complete stranger to most of you guys in English football. He spent the 2020 and 2021 campaign on loan at Wolves. But he only played 22 times and started five games in all competitions. Now, the move wasn't made permanent last year and he returned back to Porto where he played 47 times in all competitions and really, really played well because he got his chance. His performances impressed many people and Vettina reportedly has a 34 million contract release. Now, everybody knew that he had the talent, but whether he could come in and dominate in the English game, that was the big question. And he barely got a chance with Wolves. Like I said, he only started five games for the entire campaign in the league. And in the end, Wolves decided he wasn't worth the money and sent him back. But that could come back to haunt them now if Arsenal go in for the player. Now, look, um, the 34 million is kind of your ballpark. But again, it's about productivity. I really want them to see what they can do with Jesus first. They have a prized asset in the Ketia, so don't discount that. Really, it's just for someone to kind of make up the numbers and as, as an attacking midfielder. Someone that you can play who's versatile all across the line. As for Bernd Leno, his agent, Yannis, was said to say that the German international has always performed well at Arsenal and he's an absolute team player. And he also says, for him, Leno is the clear number one at Arsenal. Now, with all due respect, yeah, Fulham's trying to pull a hard one. Um, but look, Leno has been a very professional and he's not been spitting blood He's taken it on the chin and he's just moved on with it and not complained. So for that, credit to him. But let's be fair, guys. This team has been ravaged by players who can perform well, but at times have just cost this team. And Bert Leno's one of them. He's had the most mistakes leading to gold out of any goalkeeper in his time starting at Arsenal, which is the same thing he had when he was in Germany. So that's why we're looking to move with him on, just like we are trying to bring in a replacement for Xhaka. Xhaka too has been the most error-prone player, mistakes leading to goals in his position as well. So when you see those players sort of being looked at to be replaced, it's for a reason. It's because the team is trying to get better. We're trying to be more clinical at those positions and we're trying to cut down on our mistakes. So there's nothing against these players at all. Bert Leno, as I said... 
I like the I like him as a player, but when it comes to is he the right person for the team, then you have to move on. To so say what you want about Aaron Ramsdale, he didn't play well the other night. England lost four 0 to Hungary, and one can say that he has struggled towards the end of the season. But let's not forget, Aaron Ramsdale is twenty three years old. He's a pup when it comes to goalkeeper terms. So the talent is there, guys. It is there, and all you want to see is him kind of grow, cut out the silly little errors that he makes, improve on his distribution, and I think he's the right guy for the job. But um, other news, guys. Gabriel had a hair transplant procedure completed uh, by Dr. Emra Chinik this week in a clinic in Istanbul, which is somewhere where I'm going at the end of next month for the Formula 1 Grand Prix. And um, I have to say, he looked pretty nifty with it all said and done. So... Man's got a new hairstyle, less less welcome. It's a shame Rob Holding couldn't go down there. And nobody's had more hairstyles than Rob Holding over the last year. So uh, congratulations to him. But guys, remember, Arsenal's first team squad are returning to London Coney for pre-season training on Monday the 27th. So it's not too long now, only a couple of weeks. So we have to wait and see there who is going to join them, which are the new faces that is going to come in. Hopefully there'll be some deals done there. And then we'll be able to see Telemans and Gabriel Jesus. And that's it from me, guys. And I'll speak to you in the next one. Peace out.